Two women came before King Solomon. One woman said, my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house. I gave birth to a child. Then on the third day after I was delivered, this woman also gave birth. We were alone. There was no one else with us in the house, only we two. This woman's son died in the night because she lay on it. And she arose in the night and took my son from beside me while I slept and put her dead son in my bosom. When I arose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, it was dead. But when I looked at it closely, it was not my child. But the other woman said, no, the living child is mine. The dead child is yours. And the first said, no, the dead child is yours. The living child is mine. Thus they spoke before Solomon. Then the king said, the one says, this is my son that is alive and your son is dead. And the other says, no, your son is dead and my son is the living one. And Solomon said, bring me a sword. Divide the living child in two. Give half to the one, half to the other. Then the first woman spoke from her heart for the life of her child. Oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means slay it. To which the other woman spoke, divide it. It shall be neither mine nor yours. That's fair. Whereupon Solomon ruled, give the living child to the first woman and by no means slay it. She is its true mother. And all Israel heard the judgment of Solomon and stood in awe because they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do justice. Well, what do you think? Did Solomon get it right? This is the telling of the story by the clerk of Solomon's court. And so it may be a little colored that woman number one speaks from the heart and woman number two speaks with an edge in her voice. Are you sure that Solomon got it right beyond a reasonable doubt? Understand the story. He heard the witnesses. He tested the witnesses. He judged their response. And he applied the law in a way that was just. Is it possible that woman number two was actually devout? And when the sovereign king says, divide the child, she takes it as the rule of law, ready to obey whatever the sovereign says. How did Solomon know that the living child was the child of woman number one? No DNA sample to prove it. Are you sure that when he said, you are the true mother, that he meant the true biological mother? 
Is it possible that in his wisdom, he might have thought, well, even if she's not the biological mother, she's certainly the sweeter of the two women, the more appropriate to raise this child. So my judgment will be good whether you look at it as a question of biology or as an issue of the best interest of the child. 